Hey, well, welcome back, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the uh, class so far. Professor Michael Beck coming back at you. And uh, we are now, <clears throat> this week, we are jumping into uh, lecture three here. If you are in ER 655 Ministry in a Digital Age, you are in the right spot with uh, Dr. Rosario Picardo and myself. And today I'm going to jump into this process, dual transformation, which we outlined in some of the readings. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll find this useful not only in your um, uh, academic pursuits, but in, in the context of your local church. Um, <clears throat> and so last week, uh, Professor Picardo shared with us about this blended ecology, which is this kind of central idea in the Fresh Expressions movement. And we're not in any way abandoning the inherited church, but we're seeing the inherited church as kind of like this tree with a rootedness and a depth um, and, and um, the, the um, inherited attractional forms of worship are needed and powerful and good and beautiful and true. But then in the blended ecology, we're also planting these little seedlings, these little offshoots, these little new Christian communities, fresh expressions of church. And they're living together in symbiosis, the symbiotic relationship between the new thing and, and the uh, existing thing. And this is an actual uh, olive tree outside of Nazareth. I had the opportunity to go uh, visit. And as you can see, the, the resilience of this tree, it's like growing out of a rock, right? Um, but it's, it's thriving in this kind of looks like a very arid and, and um, kind of a challenging context to grow. And it's this very image that Paul uses in Romans 11 um, to describe the church, um, this uh, organic kind of living thing. And the olive tree has deep semiotics and, and uh, has been used throughout the history of um, the, the Jewish people. Um, but it, and Paul's saying, but now, you know, um, what the tree is rooted in, so he's getting back to this idea of uh, first fruits from the Old Testament, like a portion makes the whole thing holy, a portion of the uh, first fruits of the dough makes the whole batch holy, and the, the tree is rooted in something that makes the whole organism holy. Branches are broken off, new branches are grafted in, um, and, and uh, he's saying that um, uh, you have been grafted into this cultivated tree. So typically you don't take wild branches and Cult, graft those into an, uh, an existing cultivated tree. You would take a wild tree and, and graft um, uh, cultivated branches into that. So God's doing this new, fresh, innovative thing. And the whole metaphor here is about what God's doing with the Gentiles, that God's bringing together Jew and Gentile and blending them in and grafting them in to this new organism called the Church of Jesus Christ. So this actual tree uh, <clears throat> is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And what astonished me about this is these trees are reportedly about 2,000 years old. Uh, some of them have been dated and everything. And so it's possible that this is where Jesus um, uh, uh, in the Gospels sweat blood, you know, that condition of hematidrosis the, the night before his crucifixion. And he possibly touched these trees, right? And that's just fascinating that, that these, these are ancient, resilient organisms. But if you look closely at the tree, so there's this gnarled shell, there's this old uh, hollowed kind of thing that's there, but these new shoots are springing out of that um, and, and coming, growing right in the midst of the old gnarled existing thing, right out of the same root ball is these new sprouts. And so these trees exist for hundreds and even thousands of years, not by just staying the same, but through this kind of built-in process of multiplication um, and, and uh, built into the organism itself as this kind of ability uh, to graft and to, to create. And so as Roz shared about the blended ecology, there's some key things about this. One is we as the church and the blended ecology, we need to be about, be about cultivating the existing thing. So Jesus gives us this wonderful parable about the, the um, tree that's not bearing fruit. And the field tender says, hey, uh, the owner of the field says, tear that tree out of here, it's not bearing fruit. 
the field tender comes along and says, let me, let me fertilize it. Let me prune it. Give me, give me a year with it and let's see what it does. And so some of the work that we need to do in the local church is about cultivating, pruning, trimming, fertilizing uh, existing forms of church and helping them be fruitful again, right? So that's a key part. But then there's this other part that's about seeding. So we're the parable of the sower that Jesus gives us, we're casting the seeds everywhere. We're throwing it out. Anybody that's a, a good farmer is going, Jesus, this story's terrible. You don't take good, precious seed and just throw it on rocky ground and throw it on dry ground and throw it in the thorns and just waste your seed all over the place. Well, Jesus is saying the good sower does that. The good sower just has this abundance of seed, the gospel going out everywhere. It's taking root uh, in crazy places and good soil. It's bearing a crop and uh, fruit uh, uh, 10, 20, 30, 50 fold, right? But then there's this grafting thing that comes in from Romans 11, as we just saw. So grafting the new organism and the existing organism together. And so this is an actual plant called ketchup and fries. Just a little refresher here. Ketchup and fries, you can grow your ketchup and your French fries on the same plant. Isn't that amazing? This changes the potluck game forever. Um, that this, this plant, it's a hybrid organism. You can grow potatoes in the ground, tomatoes up top, same organism, got creating both a hybrid organism. So when we talk about blended ecology and the dual transformation, we need to cultivate churches that are this hybrid way of being an analog church and a digital church, being a attractional church and a missional church, being a gathered church and a scattered church. Every church on this new missional frontier is going to have to do a bit of both of those things. We're going to have to um, uh, grow the faithful kind of um, uh, roots in the ground and those colorful little new creations all over the community working together. So how do we do that? Well, that's where we kind of try to create a framework or a way to think about this. How do we do the blended ecology? And the process of dual transformation helps us to actually do the blended ecology in our local churches. And this came from some Harvard guys, um, Anthony, uh, Scott Anthony and Gilbert and Johnson. Um, and they wrote a book, Dual Trans Transformation. This is the business world. Uh, and so we're going to take some learnings from the business world um, and not just haphazardly apply them like many people do with business concepts, but look at them theologically. Um, but in, in, in their book, they talk about this process of dual transformation um, and they give a couple examples. And so one of those examples would be Netflix. If you want a classic example of what the dual transformation looks like look at Netflix. So there's these three key parts of this. So there's transformation A, which is about reinventing today. There's transformation B, which is about creating tomorrow. There's the capabilities link, which flips the dilemma, the innovator's dilemma, uh, like to innovate or not to innovate. Well, this flips the dilemma and says you're going to do both at the same time. Dual, as in two, double, transformation, as in metamorphosis, as in um, like a, a, a complete change. Um, so think of transformation, the biblical word metamufu. So the process that um, a, a, a caterpillar goes from a butterfly, that's metamorphosis and transformation. So it's two simultaneous processes of transformation happening at the same time. So think about Netflix. So transformation A is about uh, your existing customer base and doing new and creative things to expand and to grow and to make that existing customer base happy. Transformation B is about innovation. It's unlocking value through innovation. So it's reaching people that are outside your current uh, reach of your current customer base. And then the flipping the dilemma is how do we channel resources, link, uh, combine those two uh, fruits of those transformations so that the whole organization thrives, right? So transformation A, this is what Netflix did. First, they came up with this crazy idea um, that we're gonna send rentable materials, media materials in the mail to people's home. Now, did you know that um, Blockbuster actually had an opportunity to buy Netflix? Netflix positioned themselves to be purchased by Blockbuster um, for a reasonable price, hindsight being 2020, looking back now, 
Blockbuster passed on that, right? And Blockbuster's model was built on the in the store rental fees. You come in, you search for your movie or your media experience, you take it home, you rent it, you pay a late fee if you don't return it, right? And we all remember the Be Kind Rewind campaign and all that business. Well, Netflix has a different idea. We're going to send it to you in your house um, and, and we're going to do... Uh, 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 a way to like send it right to you. No, no be kind rewind campaign. No walking around the aisles. Just tell us what you want. We'll send it to you. Right. So that's the transformation. A, they're finding a way. There's an existing customer base of people. They want to uh, uh, get rentable materials. Right. But then they do transformation B and say, you know what? B, we're going to do a subscription model where you pay a fee and you get this unlimited um, uh, uh, as many rentals as you want. Right now, what they do there is they use their existing customer base and the resources that they're generating through that. They expand. And while they're doing that, by the way, they're creating the streaming technology and they're investing in that so that they can ultimately start a streaming service where we're going to just bypass the whole mail system altogether. We're going to stream into people's homes the content that they want. Right. So that'd be about transformation B and linking and flipping the dilemma. Now, here's the amazing thing about Netflix. They continue in some places in the world. By the way, Blockbuster is no more. There's like one Blockbuster in like Bend, Oregon. It's like more like a museum now. Um, but um, Netflix continues to send rentable materials in the mail to this day in 2020. Did y'all know that? They still do that, right? So they still got their transformation A thing going on. They started their streaming service directly through a subscription model. We're going to stream into your house. But then they said, we're going to do another transformation B. We're going to recreate tomorrow again. We have a goal that we want to create um, original content on our streaming platform. So we're just going to bypass movie theaters and all that business altogether we're going to actually create the content that people want, right? And so Netflix has been hitting that goal year after year, right? They're creating their own Netflix original contents, movies, docuseries, all that, right? While still continuing to have the old subscription model, streaming other stuff, sending rentable materials, and now creating their own content, whole other business um, of, uh, you know, producing and directing and creating um uh, uh, content and now streaming all that. So that's the dual transformation process, right? Um, that's a prime textbook example of what that looks like. Now let's kind of move forward into the, the church world. Let's examine this process theologically and apply it to the church world. And so in transformation A, think about the inherited, attractional, gathered, analog church. So there we are, we're strengthening the center tradition innovation. We're doing worship in a way that people uh, who are familiar with that worship know it. We're doing it in powerful and creative and meaningful ways. So we're doing that work that uh, we talked about in Luke 13, cultivating the existing tree, trimming, pruning, growing so that it'll bear fruit again, strengthening the center, tradition innovation, transformation. So we're doing new and creative stuff to care for and to grow existing congregations. Okay. Y'all with me on that? Give me an amen in the comment section if you're with me on that. Transformation B is creating tomorrow, right? So that's about this emerging, missional, scattered, digital forms of church, um, which very soon, maybe already in my church, digital actually is now shifted over into transformation A. Um, uh, because we had a living room church, which was a Facebook group with 1,500 people in it that now that's kind of like the main campus. And now we've split off and created a virtual reality living room church, which is growing very rapidly. And it's the, the original transformation A that B has become transformation A. So there's this whole thing, right? Um, but so this is about seeding. It's the, the sower, it's preparing the soil, it's casting out the seed, it's sharing the gospel all over the place. It's cultivating new Christian communities and tattoo parlors and burrito joints and dog parks and Zoom rooms and any digital ecosystem all over the place, seeding the new things, experimenting on the edge. So that's transformation B in the local church, 
getting a small team, starting these little experiments, prayerfully connecting with people outside the church, doing that in digital places and analog places and all over the place, right? Then C is that grafting uh, business that Paul was telling about us about in Romans 11. So God's grafting the, the wild branches into the deep roots, deep roots, wild branches, deep and wild, dual transformation. So that's that grafting, ketchup and fries, taking the two existing organisms, grafting together, linking them, flipping the dilemma, feedback loops. So I'm communicating the inherited congregation, the, the 20 people that were baptized in the tattoo parlor. And how their faithfulness, their prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness enabled those people to come to faith in the tattoo parlor. The Living Room Church Facebook group that had like a sub team break off and plan a church uh, in VR, in alt space, um, in virtual reality with headsets and all that. Uh, we're, we're, we're flipping the dilemma. We're sending people out. But we're also sending the stories back of what amazing things are happening there. In some cases, we're collecting an offering in some of the fresh expressions, and that's going back like Jerusalem, Antioch kind of situation, right? And, and grafting and combining those things together over time. We're locating positive deviance. The word positive deviance is how do some people uh, in a system uh, with no additional resources or advantages than their peers find a way to be successful and fruitful in the same context. Well, we call those people positive deviants. I think Jesus was a positive deviant, by the way. Um, and uh, the prophet has no honor in his hometown, right? He was such a positive deviant, people hated him for it. Um, and he was uh, almost thrown off a cliff and ran out of town, right? Positive deviants find a way to do emerging and missional stuff. So we're we're looking across the landscape of our context. We're trying to find the positive deviants. Who are doing missionally innovative things? How do we connect with them and learn from them? Link all of this together. And that's what we call a dual transformation. Um, so think about it in the church world. We're reinventing today. We're growing the center. We're caring for the existing flock and helping them see themselves as missionaries, uh, awakening them from apostolic amnesia sending them out in teams two by two to locate the persons of peace. Out on Transformation B, we're on the edge. We're creating tomorrow. We're forming church with people that don't go to church. We're not saying one's more important than the other, that one can live without the other. We're saying both are equally important. We're linking them together. We're channeling resources. We're grafting those two things so that they live in a symbiosis. And that, my friends, is a way to think about and to do the blended ecology in your local church. That's kind of the process, if you will, of dual transformation applied to the local church. Um, uh, and just uh, let me clarify, because feedback loops is a, a, a term from, uh, you know, complexity thinking and systems thinking. But that's when you take the outputs of a system and you route them back as uh, inputs. Um, so even seemingly small inputs eventually magnify into large-scale transformation. So think about um, a church that committed to, we just want to uh, serve um, free breakfast one day a week to the people in our community. Small little adaptation, small little change. Had no idea how connecting with those people, giving them breakfast, forming those relationships would feed back and transform the whole organism, the whole church. Um, we just started a dinner church in one of my congregations called the family table, excuse me. Um, we got a small team of people. We put together a meal. We started a, a inner church in between two recovery meetings that happen. And we invite people in the recovery meetings to come to the community dinner. People in the community dinner start connecting with us. They start exploring other things. They start coming to yoga church. They start coming to Sunday morning worship. That little feedback loop, that positive deviations fed back into the whole system. And it uh, uh, brings life to it. And, and um, worship, we're telling the stories. Hey, look at what your faithfulness enabled. Look at so-and-so who came to Jesus this week. Look at the, the amount of people we fed in the drive through community dinner. And so we're helping them see that their outputs are having an impact in the community. And we're feeding that back into the community. People, resources, ideas, creativity. And it's kind of creating this capabilities link, if you will. So to 
close it all down here and, and land this plane. Um, we could think about the blended ecology. This is a, a actual tree, okay? Uh, Professor Sam Van Aken at um, Syracuse University creates these trees of 40 fruit. So you can graph uh, up to 40 fruits or more uh, onto an existing tree. Through the miracle of grafting, you can have all these different fruits kind of growing on the same tree. Well, think about the revelation of St. John the Divine, right? And we see there at the uh, final new creation, um, this tree of life. And the fruits of the tree are different every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So we see this blended ecology kind of tree thing happening in the new creation, where there'll be all these different fruits growing on the same tree. It's this incredible vision of new creation. What if our churches look like that now? that our inherited churches, the rootstock, um, uh, that whatever that looks like, um, that, that the, the traditional forms, attractional forms of worship, analog forms, but there's these wild branches that are grafted in, church out happening all over the place and digital spaces and then all in throughout the community. And they're all living together like this tree of 40 fruits. Uh, it could look like this blended ecology ecosystem. Every space in our community is a God space. Every person uh, in our congregation is a missionary. Every person we encounter in the ecosystem, Jesus is already involved in their life, already deeply um, loving and, and uh, moving in people's lives before we get there. We don't bring Jesus with us. He's already there. And the Holy Spirit is moving all over our community, saying, come out and play with me. Join me in the first place, the second place, the third places we've been talking about. Um, and so our, our communities, our parish, our world is our parish, and church can spring up and form in all these different places. Um, and this is like a little snapshot of our church, where we have 15 of these things happening all over the place. We have church happening in a dog park, a tattoo parlor, uh, Zoom rooms, and a, a Facebook campus, and a yoga studio, and a running track, and a Moe's Southwest Grill. Um, and I can go on and on and on. So this is the blended ecology at work dual transformation um, in every congregation to be missionally vital in this time on the, um, the Western frontier of post-Christendom. We're going to have to really seek to do this dual transformation and create a blended ecology of church if we want to see people come to know Jesus uh, and if we want to see God's kingdom reign um, come in the earth. So, hey, that was uh, the lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, um, you can actually subscribe to my YouTube channel. Keep up with all my lectures. Um, and we love the uh, comments and the insights that are coming uh, in the chat. Uh, keep those going. It's amazing. And um, hope that you're enjoying the, the class. Thanks, everybody, and God bless.